Thy faith looks to thee, the Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now give me what I pray, take all my sins away, oh let me come this day. The holy land. Hear my children, the instructions of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law when I was my father's son, mm -hmm. tender and the only one in the sight of my mother. He also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. And she will do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom in all your getting, and, and get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. And I've read Proverbs of chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading hand of his word and application of our souls. Shall we pray? Most gracious eternal Father God, as again we come to you once again, Father, just to say thank you. Thank you, dear Father, for this another Sunday. And now of that, Father, we just thank you, our Father, for being here, Father. Giving us our strength and our health and strength, I should say, our Father, and most of all, Father, that we are able just to praise your name once again. Father God, we ask you, our Father, be with us today, our Father, as we go on, learn of thee, our Father. We know, our Father, that you're God Almighty, our Father, there's nothing too powerful that you cannot do. Dear Lord, strengthen us right now is my prayer. Look upon the sick and shut in. And those, our Father, who are breathing today, look on them in the most mindful way, our Father. Give them the strength that they need, our Father, at this time. And dear Lord, strengthen us, our Father, as we go on, our Father, through this world, our Father, where men and women, boys and girls, our Father, are not doing right for thee, our Father, but you know all about that, our Father. We ask thee, Father, just to strengthen us, our Father, day by day, our Father, that we may come to some conclusion, our Father, that we got to come to what's right and what's wrong, and who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth, our Father, but Look at it like this, our Father, that you are God. You are God. You are God alone, our Father. You understand all of our situations that we go through, our Father. We just bring everything and leave it in your hands, our Father. Strengthen us right now, Father. It's my prayer. And dear Lord, strengthen all the fathers on this Father's Day, our Father. It's my prayer for all of them today, our Father. Father God, this is my prayer this morning. We ask all these blessings in thy son Jesus' name. For Christ's sake, we do pray, do ask. Amen. Amen. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and in comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportments, to avoid all tattletaling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, 
to remember each other in prayer and to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior, to secure without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will also as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. 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 Okay, let me just say good morning to all. And today being Father's Day, I want to say happy Father's Day to all fathers, not only that's on here, uh, to that's listening and tunes in later. I, I got a, a, a text message this morning from one of our followers from over in Nairobi, Kenya. And he's communicating, he is sharing some, some biblical nuggets this morning. So people are listening and I thank God for it all. Our message today is men, the head of the household. Before I go there, let's just go to the throne of grace. Pray for me. Pray for me. When you kneel at the altar, don't forget to pray for me. Father God, I come to you as humble as I know how. Mm -hmm. Father God, I come thanking for you, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father God, most of all, I thank you for giving your son Jesus, who went to the cross for our sins, that all who believe shall have eternal life. Then, Father God, I thank you for just providing your grace and your provision of care upon us each and every day of our life. Those are your goodness and mercy angels that you that have camped around us so lovingly and willingly at your direction. Then, Father God, I just ask that you breathe on this church and every member and every attendee of this church. Father God, I just ask that you, not only this church, but every church that's open today, whether it's online or in person, Father, get them back to that true purpose and mission of the church. Then, Father God, I ask you just touch the sick and shut in everywhere. Yes. You know who they are, and you know what their needs are. And, Father, if they supply the faith, you will supply the healing. Then, Father God, I ask you to comfort uh, the bereaved families, comfort the ones whose minds are overwhelmed, overwhelmed with anxiety and worries that is being brought on by different things and, uh, and troubles of this world. Father God, let them know that if they just turn to you, you will restore, restore their peace. The peace that you give, the world cannot understand. And Father God, I ask you just touch me as I claim your word, as we look to fathers who are the head of the house, as Jesus is the head of the church. Father, I thank you in advance for answering this prayer as I'm praying it in the name of your son, Jesus. Yeah. Amen and amen. 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 As I said, they being Father's Day, I, I felt to talk to the fathers, not in a bad way, but in a good way. And I'm coming out of Ephesians 5, 23, and then 25. And I will pick up 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And they read as follows. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Then 1 Corinthians uh, 11 and 13 says, but I would, this is Paul talking to the church right now. He said, but I would have you to know 
that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. The reading of God's word for the people of God. Well, we want to today, hopefully, to look at the important role that men have and the family structure. We, when we look at the order of humanity's creation, we see God created man first. He didn't take the woman and create her, then take a rib from her side and create man. It was just the opposite. He created man, then he caused him to go into deep sleep, took a rib, out of his side and created the woman and named, she was named Eve, okay? Now, if you don't believe what I'm saying, let's look at voice Corinthians 11 and 8 say, it said, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman is of God, of, of man. Supports this biblical fact that man was created first. God has an important role for him. So this verifies the fact that man is the head of the household, or the head of the family, well, the family. And by him doing so, uh, he created him to be leadership, to be kind, to be loving, and to be caring. Then he created the woman, Eve, to be a help me and to be supportive of us. Well, she wasn't created to dominate her husband, but to be submissive. Do I say, am I saying be a mealy mouse? No, I'm not. I'm saying just be supported in a loving way. Just like the man is not to dominate his wife as a tyrant. He is to be loving to her kind to her, caring for her. And she is to be his prince, and she is to be his queen, I'm sorry, and to be compassion, his companion, and bear the children that's gonna complete the family structure. Now let's just go back and look at what you said here. You don't believe what I'm saying. And when he said the husband, the Christ, the husband is the head of the house, just like Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body. Well, we know Christ died for the church. Who makes up the church? All believers. We are the church and we are his bride. So being we are the bride, we can't be the head of the church because God, Christ, was in the beginning. Man wasn't or the church wasn't. So what are you trying to point you're trying to make? Here, I'm trying to say that Christ being the head of the church, man being the head of his household, that is the order. And when we as humanity take things out of that order, then we are going against the created order and will of God. Okay? Husbands are to love their wives. And they are supposed to love them unconditionally, just as Christ loved the church. And we've already established the fact that Christ gave himself for the church. Okay. So are you saying that the husbands, husbands are sacrificed for their family? They go to great lengths to make sure that their family needs are met because God is going to supply what is needed through the husband's effort. And loving their wives, husbands, unconditionally is that we are loving God first as he is the head, then me loves our wife. When I first heard the late Reverend Hopkins Hall, 
said that he loves his wife second to God. I had to ponder that thing until he explained. He said, God is first because he's first in our life. And we should have him first. We cannot have any other God before him. Then our wives, I'm talking about husbands now, come second. But when we want to take the family and put, when we are supposed to love our families second to God, that meaning that we will take care of them to the best of our God-given ability. All right? Husbands are supposed to love their wives with tenderness and care as Christ loved the church. Husbands are supposed to or to be, when I say the head of their wife and gentle with their wives and their family, they get up and on our Sabbath day, which is our Sunday, and taking their church, their family to church, not there at home, and the fam, the wives and the children is going to church. Just as neither is the wives supposed to send their children to church. And I know most of us on here is old enough to remember when the husband, dad, would be on his getting ready. That was a a a a. a, a foregone conclusion on Sunday morning, everybody in the Curry household was going to church. And if you didn't be careful, the roaches was going too, if they were there, <laughs> if they were there. But he, we, uh, what I'm trying to make is being a godly husband, you set the example as God had set before you and taking and leading your family to Christ. And, lead, and loving and taking care of your family as Christ has prospered you. Just as Christ's spirit lives in the church, the, uh, he does so in our godly husbands. And when, we, when the children and the, and the wives can see that in Christ's spirit and in, in the godly spirit in our husbands or in the head of the church, the family, oh. and they will take care. They no, will Father's Day. Okay. Now, husbands, well, you yeah. have to be good role models for not only just your children, but others in your neighborhoods and your community, because they may be the oh, only wow. Bible. You may be the only Bible that the others are reading. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You are not supposed to <laughs> live work. ungodly and unholy oh, and okay. expect somebody to follow you. Do they going to follow you in the lifestyle that you set before them? Mm -hmm. Husbands are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Neither are they afraid to stand firm on the truth of heart? God's word. <laughs> okay. You are. Let me do something here. Remember that you are the head. <laughs> and right mm -hmm. I'm trying to do something, but I can't get it done. Uh, and you're not afraid and nor are you ashamed to say, yes, I am a disciple of Christ. I am a child of the King, the Most High God. And yes, I'm going to look to God for my uh, directions. And I will be able. I had to unmute. I had to mute you. Uh, can you unmute? Yeah. Um, and because, and I'm going to look to God for my direction because he is the way, he's the truth, and he is the light. 
and in him, I and all of my household moved. Then husbands being godly men, they will say like the prophet says, for me and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. Amen. Regardless of what the world does, of what the world says, me and my household is going to serve the, the Lord. We godly men, and I encourage all who are not become godly men because the world is crying out for godly men who will stand up or stand in the gap and be that father figure, that godly father figure, not only to their biological children, but there's so many other children in the world today that who does not have a father or he's absent, who need that positive role model. And wow. all I'm saying to fathers today is that you are important in the role of your household and the role of your community and in the church. You have a very important role to play in your household and in the church. You are the provider. You're teaching your sons how to be providers of their household. And you're teaching your daughters how to look for a husband who possess the godly characters and qualities that you have. So the point I'm trying to make here is that, yes, you are an important part on number one, on God's program and in his structure, his family structure. He did not create two women to head up his family. No, he, he didn't. He didn't create two men either. He took one of each. And he did the man first, and I've said that early, but I'm just trying to drive home a point of the important role of men in the family structure. Somewhere we've gotten away from our men have gotten away from their responsibility. And if I were, and I don't want to be accusatory, but I, if I look at how society has come, and when I can reflect back on my father, he did not look for welfare to help him take care of us. He found a job. When the crops was over, he went and got a job. And I can, if I were to take a survey, I find so many other men from that era, and it was from an they took care of that house because that was prime. Mm -hmm. And being uh, the head of the household, being the loving father, being the caring provider, they, they had the sense of pride of how they was able to take care of their household. And they may not have had much material possession or wealth to give, but they gave them something. They gave their family and children something that money can't buy. What was it? Love. It gave them love, most of all. Then they gave them godly morals and values. And when you have those three things, the world can't touch you. They can't be bought because they're priceless. And it shouldn't be given away. Because when you give away those things, the world takes a dim view of godly men and say, I thought the men was of something by. They said they are Christian, but look at what they're doing. When we can walk the walk and talk the talk, we are making, I'm speaking to them, have a profound impact not only in our homes, but in our community and in our churches. Men, don't let nobody, uh, the world and all of his subtle attacks 
on your position in life and your purpose in life and in the family structure. God is looking for strong, godly, dedicated men. Men, when you walk that walk, talk that talk, you'd be surprised at how many young people will look to you as a positive role model. And today in the, as in the black community, we have a lack of positive role models for our young people. I employ to not be afraid to extend the hand of love and courtesy and care to some young person. And I can say this, our young people is looking for some genuine love because society has destroyed the family household. Shameful. We used to, didn't eat a meal before dad was sitting at the table, our dinner meal. Now it's just like, Everybody's doing their own thing. They eat at whatever time they eat. To come and sit around, down around the family table, but dad at the head of it, it seemed to be taboo. But let me just say this to you. We got to get back to that. And men, I encourage you, I implore you to begin to lead the way. You might ask, well, how are you be going to do that? Well, when you put God first and ask him to give you direction, and make it possible for you and your family to sit down at the dinner table and eat and have prayer together. And I will say this, godly men have time and they take the time to pray with their family. Amen. A family that prays together stays together because they are taking thought and acknowledging who is the head of their life. They are making time to make sure that they communicate with him and teaching their family and especially their children that you take time out and talk to God because he's first. You don't want him to take his rightful position in your life. I am strongly encouraged to give him his rightful place. And I, uh, as I'm almost finished, is that I encourage you. And I can say this. Like Paul said, and I may have, I would have you to know, men, you are the head of your house, as Christ is the head of every man. The man is the head of the woman, is not. Now, that puts the family structure in perspective. And we, and this is all of us now, as Christians, must not and should not have allowed the world to disrupt the family structure the way God has said it. Because we have total chaos in our society. Everybody's running. Home. Hopefully I've made the point that men is important and they are the head of the household. And as I am getting ready to close this message today, I'm encouraging men, do not let the world dis diminish your role as the head of your household 
or allow the world to fool you into thinking that you are insignificant in the role of the family structure. You don't have to have that halter spirit, a spirit of humility and loving your family as God loves you and put you in charge of the head of the household. Don't believe the world's sanctified lies because it weighs, it thoughts, and it boils and values is so much different from those of God. I'm almost finished. Husbands, you the head and not the tail. Just as Christ made you the head and he fashioned the family after himself and God is the head. So, to the family, don't be ashamed to know that you are the chosen of Christ. You are his peculiar people because you see things and do things according to God's way and not the world. Christ died for all who believe in him. That's us. We are his church. He loves us unconditionally. Therefore, I mean, close with saying, men, love your family and your wife unconditionally yes. with the love of Christ. Then I want to encourage all of us, put God first, love him with our total being, and then love one another as we would have said. Those are the commandments of God. We have to live by those. And when we don't do that, we are out of order. Let us pray. Dear kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message. Hopefully we I got some nuggets. There were some nuggets in here on um, encouragement to the I uh, men and to be in godly men and they being and being and in being godly men they will show the world Christ's manifestation in their lifestyle. And Father, I just thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for giving me the message. It's who you want to tell and point out the importance of me and to lift them up as being important in the head of the house. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. At this point, we'll open the doors of the church. If you're here, if you're listening and want to join this branch of Zion, we only going to teach and preach Christ and mm -hmm. his truth, no other. You may do so. And if you need a membership form, you can text me, write me, or go to our website, theshepherdministry.org, and click on membership and send it to that email address. And we'd be glad to have it. So with that note, we're going to uh, close with our doxology. God be with, be with you. you. God be with, with you, you until, until we meet again. Okay, I hope everybody.